I've conquered thousands of rim worlds and I'm bored. What should I do? All right, time to go on a new adventure. So what is oxygen not included? Oni. It's a colony management simulator like RimWorld, which I've covered a lot, except with a more in-depth focus on the management aspect. In Oni, you'll need to manage things like colony sanitation, oxygen levels, and heat. Comparing it to RimWorld, I'd say RimWorld goes for a broader range of options and allows you to tell a science fiction story with crazy twists and turns, while Oni goes into the details of how that story works at a micro level. In this video, I'll be guiding you through the basics of Oni and things you need to be aware of as a beginner. Even if you're not a beginner, it's fine. You might be able to pick up a tip or two, so stick around. Before we begin, remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to ring that bell. First things first, let's talk about what happens when you start out. You'll begin the game stranded on an asteroid with three duplicates, or dupes in short. What's a duplicate, you ask? It's just another fancy name for colonists. Except in this case, the duplicates are all clones, so feel free to mistreat, <coughs> I mean, pamper and love them. If you're new to the game, select the Terra asteroid location and no sweat mode would be a good idea. Well, you can be masochistic and select something harder, but you'll likely lose pretty horribly. It's fine either way, regardless of whether you start slow or jump into the deep end, it'll be a learning experience. So you've got your dupes, what now? They're just standing around doing nothing. The game tells you to start digging. You obviously need to do it to expand your colony, gather resources, and gain access to oxygen and water, but don't go on a wild digging spree just yet. Digging produces carbon dioxide, and the more you dig, the more it'll affect your oxygen supply. When you start digging, also be aware of some hazards, namely polluted areas, poison gas, and vacuum spaces. Sounds scary. Don't worry, you'll be able to deal with them later once you have the right technology, but for now, it's best to just avoid these things as they'll cause problems for your budding colony. And remember the adage, don't expand too fast too early. That doesn't just mean digging, but also accepting new duplicates, as they'll deplete your already limited supplies. See what I mean? Yeah, dupes need certain things to keep them alive and happy. Let's go over some of those factors. First, First up is food. Pretty self-explanatory, really. An army marches on its stomach, as they say. Not really sure why they do that, using legs would be better. Jokes aside, dupes need to consume about 1,000 kilocalories a day, and you only start out with 16,000 divided by three of them, which equals roughly five to six days worth of food. They'll be starving before long if you don't forage or grow anything. Fortunately, digging around your newly formed colony can yield muckroots, bristleberries, and meal ice. But that's not a sustainable long-term food source either. Best get to build food production facilities. For the most basic kind of food, mush bars. You'll need to build a micro musher, a manual granulator, and a battery. Now your duplicates are gonna like mush bars just about as much as your colonists in RimWorld like having nutrient paste. Doesn't taste great. Mush bars have 1,000 food poisoning germs as an innate property since they are made from dirt, but can't be decontaminated by trying them into mush fry. Using electric grills, which you'll acquire later on. A wash basin in the food preparation area is also important to prevent an outbreak of food poisoning which can cripple your colony. Better safe than sorry or dead, just like Rimworld. <laughs> Bear in mind, though, that as long as the food poisoning is in gaseous form and doesn't touch your food, it won't contaminate it. Still best to keep it to a minimum either way. Later on, you'll be able to research planting technology and cook more efficient food like Lysla. For now, though, mush bars are better than nothing. Sorry about that, these duplicates mess up a lot. Now, before we continue, I'd like you to subscribe to my channel and like this video if you've been enjoying the guide so far. I promise I won't yell at you like the duplicates, wink wink. Now, let's move on to oxygen. Despite the name of the game being oxygen not included, it's actually not your colony's most pressing need at the start. Still important, but not to the point of dropping everything else to focus on it. You get some to start with from oxalite tiles, and digging around allows you to find air pockets, but eventually you'll need to start manufacturing your own, which is where the oxygen diffuser comes in. Remember the manual generator and tiny battery you created to produce food? Yep, you'll need those things for oxygen too. Now connect them with the oxygen diffuser via wires and you have a working oxygen diffuser. Wait, why is it not working? All right, you need algae too. You can find and harvest algae all around the map. Sometimes it grows in large quantities, but the problem is it doesn't grow back. Once it's harvested and used up, that's it. Especially since it takes a lot of algae to produce sufficient oxygen. There is a way to convert slime into algae later on, but 
It's honestly quite inefficient, and I wouldn't recommend doing that unless you are in desperate need of oxygen. But for now, don't worry too much about it. Just build a diffuser or two, which you can later replace with the electrolyzer to convert water into oxygen and hydrogen, once you have enough of water supply. Speaking of the water supply, let's talk about water. Like food, it's a very important resource. The game simplifies it somewhat by making duplicates not have to drink water to survive, but you'll still need a lot of it for producing food and oxygen. As as mentioned earlier, as well as sanitizing the environment. Unlike oxygen and food, in the early game water cannot be directly produced, only moved around from its source or decontaminated. Once you discover a water source, in order to bottle it for transportation elsewhere, you'll require a pitcher pump and a bottle emptier to empty that water back out into another location. When digging for water, you'll need to be careful of the material you dig through. Some tile materials like sand are weak and will easily collapse, which may flood your base. There's a risk you'll get your machinery damaged or lose dupes to drowning, so don't be hasty. Be aware, both air and water can be polluted, whether naturally or through your colony's actions like leaving rubbish around or pooping on the floor when they don't have a toilet. Ew. Ew. Oh. Yeah, use one of those three for that bit. If that happens, the resource is rendered unusable and potentially harmful until cleaned up. Ugh. Thinking about all those needs for the colony is making me stressed. I think I might puke. We'll cry for a few hours. That's right, stress is a major hazard in this game as well, and is something that destroys most colonies. Stress can be caused by a large number of factors, which I won't go into detail about here. The general idea, though, is that you need to provide for the basic needs and keep your environment clean, neat, and well decorated to make sure duplicates don't break down. Every dupe has a unique trait that makes them react differently to stress, generally in detrimental ways. For example, take Patty here. She's an ugly crier, which makes her her sob non-stop when she hits 100% stress, leaving puddles of tears on the floor. Other duplicates may vomit uncontrollably or go into a rage or start picking out on food. Not unlike Rimworld, is it? When they start doing this, you'll be unable to command them and duplicates will keep repeating their stress response until the stress meter drops to 60%. It's highly detrimental to the colony's operation if half your duplicates are paralyzed by stress, and certain stress traits can also pollute or damage surrounding areas which causes even more stress. So how do you keep them happy? The best cure is prevention, so don't let them get too stressed out to begin with. If you do, though, you can still perform stress relief actions, like feeding them soul food, resting in the med bay, and having duplicates interact with each other. Proper beds for sleeping with sufficient room between each other and toilet facilities are also vital to keeping duplicates happy. I'm pretty sure you wouldn't be happy with not having a bed or toilet, right? Fortunately, I'm sure those of you watching this guide are all really Really happy folk. It'd make me happy too if you were to leave your questions on beginner tips or comments or tip suggestions down below. Hopefully my video helps you beat the stress. Since keeping the colony environment neat and orderly is important, that's where storage comes in. Building storage bins allows you to organize your gathered or crafted items into containers. It's not just useful for reducing duplicate stress from running up and down for materials, storing materials properly also makes your base more efficient. Ideally, you want to build two bins to start out with. Be one that there are some drawbacks, albeit easily rectified, to using storage bins. While bins reduce the stress of having it to turn around, they also provide some stress of their own by reducing the room's decor rating. Storing polluted or infectious material like slime and rubbish inside bins also allows the pollution to affect surrounding areas, so you'll want to move some bins to specific rooms so they won't bother the colonists. Leaving them underwater would be a good option as germs will die from the lack of oxygen. So far, all the stuff I've mentioned from toilets to material storage to bacteria is all an important part of sanitation. Not building any toilets or waste disposal facilities leads to duplicates getting sick and stressed, which leads to them causing havoc in the base and further hampering your efforts to keep things orderly. It's a vicious cycle of doom. It'd be a shame to lose an entire colony because you didn't bother to build a toilet or clean the room, wouldn't it? Speaking of cleaning rooms, I recommend using chlorine to kill germs quickly. Another thing you should be aware of that won't seem to be a problem early on is heat 
eat. It's easy enough to manage since you start in a temperate biome, but once you break through to other biomes, the temperature won't be so forgiving. Other biomes may also contain dangerous gases and germs, but also important colony building materials, so you gotta know the right time to dig and when to stop. Luckily, the game provides you with a temperature overlay, a menu where you can check the ambient temperature. But if you're on the verge of digging into a new domain and your colony isn't already prepared for what they may occur, don't worry. You're not out of options. Some biomes are naturally sealed off by walls of absolite, a nearly zero heat conductive material, while others can be blocked off using insulated tiles or airlocks. Once you unlock the atmosphere, you can negate temperature disadvantages when exploring those biomes. But if you haven't unlocked it or don't want to, the liquid airlock tricks work just fine. And do not break the absolute too early, you will die horribly. Lastly, research. Like oxygen and heat, there won't be much researching done right at the start. Eventually, though, you'll need to do research to expand your colony's survival capabilities and their standard of living. Ideally, you should start with food technology, research especially basic farming, which unlocks algae terrariums and planter boxes. Algae terrariums are nice to have for cleaning up carbon dioxide, but they're not very efficient or necessary. It's better to just redirect the gas into holes and build a carbon skimmer later. Planter boxes, on the other hand, are absolutely vital to start planting mealwood and growing your own food. Remember to keep them away from heat sources like appliances or they'll die. And beware of germs in the compost you use. Also try to research power regulation or meal preparation as soon as possible. You won't get very far with just manual generators and batteries and meal preparation allows you a wider range of food recipes in case some required resources you're low on, like water or lice loaf, be aware that research uses up a lot of water. So you'll want to make sure you have more than enough for the needs of your colony before beginning research. That's about it for... Oh, we have a few more miscellaneous tips. You know that weird faceless creature called the hatch? It's a good source of food, as well as a coal to power your generators, all for a minimum of effort. Try domesticating and raising some as early as possible, it's worth it. Also, if your tubes happen to catch the slime lung disease, don't panic. It can be annoying when it reduces productivity because they keep sneezing, but isn't generally fatal. So, those are some helpful tips for surviving your initial colony managing experience and oxygen not included. It's a fun game, really, but the initial difficulty curve can be hard to overcome. Nothing wrong with failing over and over though, that's how you learn. Give the game a try yourself and maybe you'll grow to enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed my beginner's guide to oxygen not included. Do try the game out and let me know how you feel about it in the comments. Feel free to drop suggestions or questions below too. Be safe out there and don't dig too fast. Wow, you made it this far. Well, if you made it this far, there's probably some other video links on your screen. You should click on one of them. The other videos we've made here are pretty good. You'll probably enjoy them. Click on one.